Greeting fellow modelers, hope you are all doing very well. You are truly valued. Presenting today, the Albatross D5A from the Fiddler Green series. Let's begin. So again, I'm telling you, my friend Chip Finn from Fiddler's Green, visit there, you won't be disappointed. And here we have the Albatross D5A. Now, stabilizer. The machine gun barrels. Very interesting. Forward fuselage, main fuselage. Tail section. The main lower wing. The main upper wing. The props. And the nose. And here pretty much is a diagram showing basically how to put it together. This is going to be a bit complicated, so buckle up, strap in, and let's begin. For the tools needed, you know I always have my super glue, my regular school glue, and tacky glue. Very important. Scissors, toothpick, tweezers. Can never get enough of these. A cutting knife. That's my exacto and my cake decorating tool. Ball points on the end. And of course, a steel rule. So let's begin by cutting out the parts. Of course, again, everybody has their personal preference. Mine is to cut all the parts out so that we can just focus on what we need to and we can quickly grab as time go by what else we need to cut, sort, and fold and put together. So that's it. Nice. So in assembling the center fuselage, you're going to notice me doing something a bit different. After we finish cut it out, because it's an open cockpit, we're going to shade the inside with my watercolor pencil of wood color. So here is it, I'm going through the length of shading it. Then I'm going to use the brush handle to roll it. We join the parts as indicated and repeat the process with the forward section of the center fuselage. Roll, cut out where the lower main wing is going to go first, and then we glue that part together. As you notice, I'm now going to join it and I'm going to just color the edge of the cockpit opening after. So make sure the arrows are aligned, looking good, looking quite spiffy. And then there you go. Nice. Time for the rear fuselage assembly. Now, once we cut the piece out, we're going to focus on rolling and cutting out the part for the stabilizer. So here you see me rolling. And the reason why is once we cut the part for the stabilizer, we can't roll it pretty much anymore and this is the best time to do it. Now you see me cutting out the part for it. It's not just one slice, it's two slices. We're making it a bit spaced enough as you can see I'm displaying here. You see that wide gap? That is to accommodate when we are putting in our stabilizer. There you see, the gap is wide, it's not just one cut, it's two. I hear you see me trying to use the brush handle to slightly roll what can be rolled, and now I'm gluing together. Pretty much decent here. And now we're going to glue the rear fuselage to the center. Once we make sure all the parts are aligned, we clamp in place using our flat beak tweezer. You see me using the cake decorating tool to roll to just make sure it is all right around, flattened, nice. So for the stabilizer, it's more than just cutting two parts out as you see here and joining. Look what I'm doing. And I'm going to explain why I did it. Now I'm going to cut a strip 
and glue as you're going to see here to one side of the fuselage now the reason why this is done is I'm going to use that very strip I applied to align the stabilizer properly of course it's not 100% accurate so we're going to just trim to make sure both sides look even you see I trimmed that now I'm going to apply a little glue here and slide it right in beautiful now I'm not worried about the fuselage stabilizer being off centered because that what I've used on the frame make sure it's properly aligned and there you have it thank you so much for following me to this part and you know what's going to happen I'm going to ask you please subscribe if you haven't already or hit that like button if you like what you have seen so far thank you so much and on to the fin it's a simple cut out fold along that line you see I make a slight cut there that is to put in a strip of paper now that paper will help me to firmly hold it to the fuselage and it's pretty straightforward what you see here what I like about World War One aircraft especially from the Flying Circus which was referred to the the German group is their bright colors they look like literal pigeons canary in the air and it was really I'm really in awe of the various color and the personality traits of each aircraft I think that's what draw me to them more than anything else and they're pretty unique in how they look and there you see me securing the stabilizer to the fuselage pretty nice so the lower wing assembly one of the reasons we're building it now is that we're going to slide this into the fuselage before we put on the forward nose section so I just marked the two ends so I can make a decent fold on the steel rule nice and then I'm going to use my brush handle paintbrush handle and I just roll either end on the top and you may not see it, but I've also once finished cutting this out I'm going to roll the underside slightly because World War One fighters are not like they were even in World War II they literally had the shape of birds where the upper surface is curved but so was the undersurface of the wing so it had that unique trait here you see me cutting out the gaps at the edge of the wing that will help me with applying the curve properly now you see me doing this to the toothpick it's to make sure that that wing remains sturdy in the center and I'll use the edge of the tooth handle toothbrush handle to curve the edge of the wing and now I'm going to glue as you see here the trailing edge nice nice beautiful and now we put everything on the flat surface and make sure everything is straightened out on the flat surface any gaps you see I just sort of cut it because again it's not 100% perfect but it's pretty decent now this is just me applying glue in between the upper and lower surface on the edge so I can form the curve perfectly and properly and once I've done this to both sides, I then trim right after with the scissors. Nice. We slide it now as a test to make sure, yes, it can fit. Good. Apply our glue, lock it in place, and watch what I'm doing now. You see those grids on my cutting mat? I'm using it to align the fuselage and the wing to make sure it's literally perpendicular to each other it's really squared up nice 
So now that we have done that, we can now focus on the nose. It's a simple cutout and fix in place. I think what amazed me with the Albatross building it even for Fiddler's Green is a high degree of accuracy. In this video, I have not gone into the details of the rigging of the wing, but it really does add to your model once you're completed. So here is a basic thing you see me applying to There you go, there you go. That didn't finish my sentence, but applying the nose section to the main fuselage really lock everything in place and makes it happen. And now we do to the front part, and this is where now we're going to go off script. We are going to attach the spinner, which we're assembling now, to that section of the nose. So the first thing I do is cut out that circular part for the nose, and I put it on the inside, right? I don't have to bring it up to the very edge, but I super glue in position, so it will always maintain that proper profile of a circle. Here now you see me assembling the spinner. Use that tiny ball. You could use the edge of your brush handle too. And then here we're doing the nose. Now me clipping the edge of this will make sense to you eventually. Because once we now assemble the two parts here we're going to use our tweezer to hold everything in place and those snippings you see me do will help with the paper holding that curve and making it look more realistic and now we apply what we have to the forward section nice make sure the parts are aligned where the engine would be and there we have it now engine installation should be pretty much straightforward this is basically cutting out folding and gluing in place so look carefully at what i did and see if you could follow if you so choose to build it Here I use the combination of using that tacky glue and then use the super glue to properly hold it in place. So the tail skid installation is pretty simple. Here you see it, I'm going to just use the back of my X-Acto knife, score down the center, fold it in half and press it down on a flat surface, cut the part out properly Apply a little glue, center it, looking good, fix in place with my super glue. And that's it, pretty much. Nice. So now the landing gear is where it gets a little technical. You see, I first start with cutting out the landing gear strut. I'm going to get an extra piece of card sheet to this, I'm going to put the landing gear strut on. Then look carefully where I made incisions in there. That's where I'm going to insert and hold in place with super glue. Now super glue doubles as strength in the paper and making it pretty solid so it won't fold or bend as such so easily. Now the landing gears back then even had their own aerofoil section, as you see there. And that's how I secure it in place. It's pretty nice. And then once you're finished, 
Just use your tweezer to strain the areas. Now remember the wheels back then were a little more complicated. What I simply did is cut the wheels out here, glue them to each other, and then later on we'll color the edge of the wheel. So this shouldn't be a problem. And after we have done this, we're going to use our blade and put a slot in the center. And onto this, we attach the wheels onto our landing gear and secure in place using our super glue. Now the cones we make, it's pretty simple. It's a matter of just creating that circle using your brush handle to help with that shape. We glue the edge, fix it, apply glue to the edge of it, and secure in place with a tweezer. So don't worry about the edge at this point because later on, we are going to paint the edges. Beautiful looking model. There you go, there you go. The center wing strut, we're going to do the same as we have done for the wheel strut. We're going to secure it onto the cardboard. We're going to cut the parts out. And then there are slots which are on the fuselage. We're going to just make tiny incisions so that we can secure it with super glue. The gun emplacement is pretty straightforward. I simply cut the barrel of the machine guns out. I'm going to roll it over a toothpick. Once it's rolled, I'll remove the toothpick and just put some super glue down the center, which will hold the structure pretty steady. And then I'll just secure in place using regular glue. And that's pretty much it. Lovely. Windscreen assembly, pretty much the same thing. We just cut the windscreen out. After we fold it, we cut, put a little glue on it. We're going to use the handle of our knife blade, roll it, and just put it in position. Once completed, I'll secure it using super glue. And now we're almost at the end of everything. You see those slots? We we'll make tiny incisions in them. This is where we're going to attach our wing struts. So I fold the wing up, this is my trick, and then I fold it the other way so it look proper. And the same way we assemble the lower wing, we're going to assemble the upper wing, which means once we cut the edges out, we're going to roll both the top half, the bottom half, the edges, and we're good to go. Don't forget the toothpick, which I used to strengthen that upper wing. And then you see me glue the center here first. That's to hold everybody and everything. And then I glue the rest of the trailing edge. And just like the lower wing, we repeat the process for the upper wing. And don't worry if it doesn't come out 100%. Remember, the kit is not 100% accurate. So in this case, we can paint where it didn't really meet it. Here you see me securing the wing strut to the upper wing surface in this particular clip. And then I'm shading with my watercolor pencil the inside. And pretty much it's just tacking both sides in, gluing into position. And pretty much that's almost complete. Your model is almost good to go. We're going to put the radiator heat exchange on top, secure in place. The last piece, the prop. So by this now, you know the usual drill. It is 
to use the back of the knife fold glue cut and install so see what I'm going to do here I made that incision in it and then I just put the blades in align them properly and then hold in place with super glue and there we have it I just want to thank each and every one of you especially my patreon members thank you so much for your support thank you for everything that you have done and what I say always is be gentle to yourself love what you do and one love